Okay, good morning, everyone. I'm going to call the July 25th, 2020 Marion Township Board of Supervisors workshop meeting to order. The time is now 9.04 a.m. Uh, we are doing these meetings via Zoom simply because of the COVID-19 uh, concerns and the uh, Governor Wolf's stay-at-home orders. Um, we typically do the Pledge of Allegiance when in the building, but due to the nature of how the telepresence meetings are done, we're going to admit that for the time being. Uh, we will open up the floor to public comments. Uh, Sue has indicated that there are no previously submitted comments via email. Uh, and we do have somebody on the line who is uh, going to be discussing one of the agenda items. Um, so I'll actually I'll unmute him now to see. Uh, Greg, do you have any public comments or are you simply here for the subdivision? Uh, I'm, I'm simply here uh, if I'm needed for questions on the, uh, the, the Planning Commission action the other night. Uh, we're requesting a waiver for the uh, placement of the driveway on the lot at uh, 205 West Main Street. Okay. Okay. I see we also have Kelly on, so I'm going to ask Kelly to unmute and I'll confirm if she has a, a public comment or not, since we only have two participants this morning. Okay, Kelly, I've asked, asked you to unmute. Do you have any public comments? Okay, I, I would say silence being, being acceptance there, we're, we're probably good. If something comes up, text me. You have my phone number and then I can, I can unmute you again. Okay, so at this point, we'll move into the items for discussion. The first item on the agenda is the emergency declaration. We still have this in place from when we enacted it on April 1st. Uh, it is in place until we take further action. Uh, I, for one, suggest leaving it in place for the time being. Uh, while Pennsylvania is back to a green state, uh, there are still a, a ton of new COVID cases being reported on a daily basis. And to be frank, what we're doing right now is, is, is functional. It's working. And the priority here is keeping everyone safe. So I'm, I'm hesitant to, to go back to the norm of having everybody pack into the township building. Not so much on the Saturday meetings because we only usually have a handful of people turn up, but the Thursday night meetings would be near impossible to have the kind of turnout that we typically do with social distancing. I'd like to add to that. Mm -hmm. I agree wholeheartedly. Unfortunately, if we were to go to in-person meetings, we'd have to severely limit the amount of people that we have. It would be on a first come first serve basis, which I think could potentially get ugly. The other aspect of that is that we can't comply with CDC as, uh, as far as cleaning guidelines, because number one, we don't have people that routinely clean the building. Number two, as far as supplies go. So we couldn't comply with those aspects of it. So Again, for safety concerns, I agree with maintaining Zoom meetings until um, the situation changes. Thank you, Irene. And Peter, just in, something to add, I had two telephone calls from residents um, in the past couple of weeks about opening up the playground. And I just explained to them, uh, we need to follow CDC guidelines. We do not have staff to clean the equipment after each use. So they were happy with that. Yeah, and that's that's absolutely 100% spot on. Like, I, I know I'd personally, I'd love to open the playground. My kid has been itching to go and play, and I've had to try to explain to my four-year-old uh, why we can't go to the playground, which is, it's difficult, mm -hmm. I understand. But the, again, the priority here is to keep everyone safe. Mm -hmm. Okay, we don't have anything additional on that. The next item on the agenda is the 205 West Main Street. That's uh, a waiver request from the Subdivision and Land Development. Uh, with, for Greg Kreitz. We have Greg on the line, so I'm going to unmute him. Um, the waiver is about a, a driveway, the placement of a driveway, and the uh, Planning Commission has actually suggested that we grant the waiver. Um, in the Google Drive, I have uploaded the, the actual full detailing from Mac Engineering and McCarthy, and uh, I personally, I don't have any objections to it. I think it's, it's a pretty basic request. I guess I, I have a question about it. So my understanding is, so uh, normally a driveway would have to be 80 feet to the point of the intersection. And this current uh, driveway is proposed to be 18 feet from the central line in the nearest driveway. Um, McCarthy, did, am, I, am I reading this wrong? McCarthy recommended to not grant the waiver? Is that correct? 
they did they did in the letter but then we got an, an additional request from mac engineering with additional reasons why they wanted to move the driveway and at the planning commission meeting craig bonnenberger was there from mccarthy and um he said given the drawings that uh, mac engineering provided um and the reasons that he felt it it should be granted also so that so that last line in the letter that you got um it's kind of not valid anymore yeah the the biggest thing is like there the, was if you discussion look at, at the meeting that go, go, ahead, go ahead no go ahead there was, there was discussion at the meeting that um validated the reasons to move the driveway yeah the biggest points if you look at the the mac engineering letter which is uh, just shy of a month after mccarthy's the reasons relief is requested some of the biggest ones is uh it actually makes it worse from like an npds like stormwater runoff standpoint to do it the normal way uh and the the roads that are involved are like minor intersections there's no arterial streets mm -hmm. involved so it's it's really it's it's i don't want to say off the beaten path but it's it's outside of the the main thoroughfare enough that the usual safety requirements of, of distance really aren't super applicable mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, we don't have to we don't have to vote on this this is just a discussion point i, I like mm -hmm. to keep motions for thursday night as much as possible other than just right. basic administrative stuff but i guess i want to take a now, look at it yeah yeah as i say if you need if you no, want to I take more time to look at I mean, it Irene, I can show you the the drawing, uh, the big drawing that the planning commission had. I have to. And go so if he would have, <laughs> if he would have moved it over uh, west farther, and Greg, correct me if I'm wrong. If you would have moved it west farther, it would have kind of lined up with a drainage pipe that goes under Main Street. Okay. Um, and if you would have moved it over more west. Um, it would have been in his septic system area, mm -hmm. and then the driveway would have gone in front of the house, which he really would try to wants to avoid. That's 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 correct. The uh, and the Craig option. Craig Bonenberger from. Go ahead, Greg. No, just the the, the option to move it. The 80 feet puts it over by the culvert, uh, which runs under the road. And uh, with the driveway coming in there, it, I'm forced to drive over uh, the drain line uh, that comes down to my septic field from the house. There's no, there's no way to avoid that. Uh, I was hoping, you know, at, at the what's well, been a natural entrance. Uh, off of uh, off of Main Street, one to the property. It's been used by you know farm equipment for a long time, and it seems like the natural entrance. The, the sight lines are are very good there, uh, west and east and, and south. So uh, I I don't think you know it's just my opinion, but I don't think the sight lines are as good at, at the other location. Okay, so Irene, uh, the takeaway on this is you'd like to look over the the drawing a little further with Sue uh, this week. I guess you know I have to rely on the engineering um, opinion as well as um, I mean I understand convenience, um, but no, I, I mean I'll 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 take a look and I'll physically go out there and take a look at it too, just for my own satisfaction. But if the engineers are in agreement and we're not impacting anything as far as drainage, then I'm good with that too. Okay, so then we can. We can have a little more discussion Thursday night and then potentially make a motion around that. So, sure. uh, Greg, you're welcome to, to stick around for the rest of the meeting. Otherwise, uh, I think we've, we've covered that, that point for, to the extent that we're going to cover it today. So feel free to, to stay or, or leave at your discretion. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate you. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the hidden driveway sign. Uh, the solicitor drew up an ordinance uh, which will need to be signed. Uh, the enactment notice was posted on the outside bulletin board uh, July 21st and was advertised in the Reading Eagle on July 22nd. Uh, so we should be able to do that Thursday night and then get that sign placed as intended. 
So while we're while we're on the discussion of signage, I'm actually going to go a little out of sequence here. I'm going to jump down to some of the comments that I had. Um, we did place some of the no parking signs uh, along Main Street and along William Penn Boulevard. Uh, we actually ended up altering the original plan a little bit based on just some of the the conditions on the roadway. Uh, for example, over by Stonecroft, we put in two signs simply because the opposite side of William Penn Boulevard along that stretch is single lane. There's no parking on that other side anyway. Um, we also omitted the one down by Sundew Lane uh, simply because of the, the presence of a, a storm grate that's in far enough that no one in their right mind is going to park there. And I don't know that I've ever seen anybody park down that stretch of road, let alone in that particular section. Uh, we have the sign. If we need to go out and redo it, we can. Otherwise, uh, we have the, the signs along Stonecroft that were requested by the residents uh, in place. And along Main Street, we have uh, a couple more that we have to place, uh, mostly because of uh, site conditions. Concrete goes directly to the, the street, and uh, we didn't have the, the, the equipment with us at the time to put a sign into concrete. Uh, so we have three placed on Main Street, and we'll need to do another three once we have the, the, the drill or impact hammer or whatever, whatever we opt to do to get that concrete displaced so we can get the sign in. Um, the two signs at Stouchburg and Wintersville prohibiting truck tra traffic have been placed. Uh, I did take a picture. I can share that with, with everybody afterwards. Um, the one thing to be aware of, though, is the homeowner seemed reluctant to move the boulders out of the, the right-of-way, mm -hmm. which I explained that's it's not really an option. You, we, we need to have this done because it's technically in the road. Uh, so the ask around that, and I I think it's a reasonable accommodation is he's going to join Thursday night. He wants to ask the engineer some questions. And then one of the things that, that I offered is we're, we're not telling you to remove the boulders. We're telling you to move them back so we can get the measurements from the engineer of exactly where that needs to be so that it's not a, a guessing game. Somebody can maybe come out and put a little yellow flag or something in the ground so that you know where to move them back to, but we'll, we'll help you out, but it's got to get done. The, the intent here is to, to make things safe, both for you and everybody else. That's the whole reason we put the signs in and the reason we're asking that the boulders be moved. So we'll, we'll follow up on that this week. I'll make sure he gets the meeting invitation for Thursday night mm -hmm. and I'll make sure that Jim McCarthy or somebody from McCarthy Engineering is on to discuss as well. A quick question on that. Was that the location that was impacted by truck traffic coming from another township? Yes. So the next step, once we have the signs and everything like that, is I'm going to be working with Jackson Township because they're going to have to enact a similar ordinance to place signage further up the road warning people. Um, right now, if somebody comes in either on uh, Stouchburg Road or Wintersville Road, they can continue going straight. It's a little out of their way, but they don't have to turn. It's just I think the GPS tends to route you that direction because of just the shortest distance. It doesn't take into account that you're a ginormous tractor trailer that can't really make that turn. Okay. So that's that's the next step. We All have right, the sign. Appara Good. Apparently, tractor trailer trucks that were bringing supplies for Jeremy Troutman's new chicken barns were the ones that were making that those turns. Yeah, so and that's that's what the homeowner said is the, predominantly the, the chicken farms are the the worst offender of that. Yeah, and, and hopefully once his chicken barns are built, it will subside a little bit. Yeah, or once the signage is up for long enough that people know they can't take that way, it'll it'll kind of, I think, normalize on its own. But the other thing, like we had talked about before, is to get the signage in Jackson Township further up the road, just giving people mm -hmm. kind of an advanced heads mm -hmm. up that there's going to be a, an upcoming no turn. Okay. A any questions, comments, or concerns there? No, oh, thank you. Okay. Excellent. Uh, next item on the agenda is the treasurer's report. Uh, Irene, I'll let you take it away from here. No, sure. Thank you. Sue has been absolutely 100% instrumental in helping me understand a lot of the uh, requirements with respect to meetings and reports. So um, we have to come up with a better format to present to the public and for the meetings as far as um, bills, etc. And um, this needs to be approved by the board. So at some point, um, I've, I've thrown it at Dan to help me figure this out. Rick actually um, uh, had a little bit of input. He was down at the office with us on, on uh, Thursday. So we're gonna try to come up with a better format as far as our ability to report everything to the public because honestly, and, and Sue point out, what we're currently doing really just doesn't seem adequate. We need to have a better um, presentation of total money that, that goes out to the public 
Um, and but we're also well it, using Zoom and Google Drive. It's a lot nicer because we're not handing out a, a lot of paper to everyone. So I mean, in, in that respect, it doesn't matter how big it is. But when we return to the, that public format where we're having in-person stuff, we just want to get it to the point where it's easily under, understandable, but as well as condensed. So we're gonna. I guess I'm going to have to come up with a couple of different formats, have everyone take a look at it, see what we feel is best to present to the public, and it has to be approved by the board. Okay. So I've, I've got an initial thought around that that I was, I was going to run by you at some point. We can connect throughout the week was since we, we predominantly we have the, the main account, the streetlight funds, and then we typically break wages out. Mm -hmm. um, on a single eight and a half by 11, you could do essentially two columns, one main column, and then two two cards on the other side mm -hmm. uh, and then have like a starting balance, ending balance, total deposits, total expenses, and then a, a list. And we wouldn't have to use a very large font. We want to obviously be cognizant mm -hmm. of people being able to read it, but have a list of like all of the expenses, all of the deposits. Right. Um, we just have to play with the fit to make sure that it fits nicely, but we could probably get something like that yeah. worked into place. So yeah, yeah absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, just it needs to again. It, best practices. We need to update what we're doing. We need to be able to carry it forward so that it makes sense and it's understandable to the average person. You know, I again, I, I don't think it's well known in the public, and I'm going to state here just for the record. Everyone and anyone has access to, uh, to to request what our bills are at any point. Anyone in the public can make that request, and honestly, it's very easy for us to pull up and. Uh, um, uh, tell anyone about it. The other thing is too is, uh, you know, I would say for our future meetings, once this is down pat, to have a, a few minutes to have a treasurer's report. Because again, this is something I did on another board. Um, and hopefully with Dan coming on board and getting up to, to snuff with everything, have him take five, 10 minutes out and give us that verbal treasurer's report. And uh, I think that again, that's a nice addition. I agree. I completely agree. So one of the things that uh, I think, Jim, you may be you may be muted because I saw your mouth move, but I didn't hear you. Or <laughs> I think I'm. I think I'm. Oh okay. no, you're okay. You're good. I just didn't hear you. Um, one of the things that I've been doing once we have the 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 reports out is I've actually been putting them up in the public section on the Google Drive. So if somebody wants to see the the financial reports from a prior month, any of the ones that we have handy, I've I've put up there. So they're they're out there for public view, even without a right to know request. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, so I, I look forward to, to having some. And some as far as Go. as far as the minutes are concerned, up to this point, or um, I am putting the uh, expenses, the bills, in the minutes. So uh, prior secretaries have put the bills and the deposits in the minutes. Um, so that was another reason for trying to figure out how to condense everything so I can get it in the minutes. Um, the, the other question is, um, can we just say the treasurer's report was read and accepted and not list the bills and the, well, I don't put the deposits in, but not yeah. list the bills in the minutes. Yeah, I'm actually thinking, let's then ask. Then you have to make sure you always keep the, the reports. Yeah, I'm actually thinking, let's ask Andy for the etiquette and the requirements on that. But I, I personally am kind of in favor of having a separate treasurer's report that we reference in the minutes. So you could read the minutes. And then if you wanted to read right. the treasurer's report, you just get the treasurer's report out. It's very similar to what we do with the like the agenda right. items where we have the main agenda and then we have all those other things that we look at that, that kind of dovetail into it. That'd be fantastic. Right. Because if you do go on other municipalities' websites and read their minutes, um, a lot of them say, uh, Treasurer's report was read and accepted. Uh, Roadmaster's report was read and accepted. You know, blah, blah, blah was read and accepted. Uh, and they don't list every single thing that was discussed. So, um, you know, it, it's up to you guys ultimately, but. Yeah, I'm, I'm personally, and let's, let's discuss more on Thursday night too and potentially make a decision depending on if we have something in hand that we, we want to move to. But I'm, I'm not opposed to that. My, my understanding of minutes is from like my, professional career is they're they're usually kind of the high level synopsis of the meeting it's not like a, a stenographer went through and, and dictated every single thing um, right. so it, we don't it's necessarily not verbatim conversation it's not transcription um, Correct. it's not a stenographer's um you know court a court stenographer's mm -hmm. thing um 
Yeah. So, so I, 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 like I yeah, and I think that really emotion. kind of supports what we're what we're talking about doing is you have the highlights. If you want to see the treasurer's report, it's available. You can go read it. Or you want to see the police report, it's available. You can go read it. If you want to see the roadmaster report, you can right. exactly. go see it. So yeah, I'd, I'd say let's let's take some data and. Uh, Irene, if you want to email me a copy of like the, the expense and the deposits workbook for sure. really any month, it doesn't matter. I'll see if I can hammer it into a shape that we all like. Yeah. And then let's collectively all do that and see if we find something either that, that fits or we have to mesh a couple of ideas together to get something that, that we all like. Something that makes sense. I'm sorry, I'm not that proficient. In oh, no, <laughs> no, it's okay. If you, if I, uh, one of the, the things that I can do is I'm pretty proficient with Excel. Generally speaking, if you want something done in Excel, I can figure out how to get it done. So if there's something that you, you say, like, I really wish it would do this, tell okay. me, send me the file. I will, okay. I will work with it. And chances are, I can probably hammer it in the shape okay. that you want. Okay. I'll take a look at stuff. It's just a lot of data. Yep. Oh yeah. 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 It's, it, it's a bunch of stuff in, in each one of those files. Yeah. Um, Okay, so if we don't have anything further on that, we'll move on to the next agenda item, which is also around the financials. It's the uh, the QuickBooks. I'll turn yes. that over to Irene. Yep. Um, Rick, again, he was down at the office with me on Thursday. And um, so part of one of the issues that we had is we were doing a lot of redundant work, especially when it comes to payroll. So he set it up in a different format so that we're able to pay payroll, uh, we're able to document payroll in QuickBooks, but not have to go through the minute detail of entry during every single paycheck since we're already paying jet pay to do that for us so there's a separate separate uh, format for that which was really nice uh, the other aspect is uh, we're up to snuff everything is caught up we are current with with all of our QuickBooks accounts everything we are we are up to July which is where we should be so um, in addition to that uh, Rick was helping me make sure we had all the information uh, ready for our I just need you to come down and uh, make sure I pull the correct information okay. and uh, we could do, go ahead and give them a call this week. Okay. I'll see you. I'll check my schedule and I'll give you a call and see where, yeah. where it lines up with yours for like maybe Monday or Tuesday night. Mondays, yeah. Mondays are usually like the worst day of the week for me. Yeah, but maybe, okay. maybe Tuesday, if, if not by then Wednesday, but we'll, oh, we'll absolutely. connect. We'll figure it out. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. He's been uh, extremely helpful again, available by phone call, available by text. Um, and, um, uh, yeah, really fantastic. So I, I'm happy to report to everyone, Jim, I don't know if you caught on this, like we, we are caught up and we're going to maintain that because once we're caught, there's, there's no back work for me to do anymore. So it's much easier just to continue and go forward. Yeah. Now that we're in, in kind of a, a steady state, what I'd like to do is I'd like to work with you and then Dan as well too, because this yeah. is going to be a good learning experience is documenting how to do this stuff, getting it into a procedure yep. guide so that whether it's you, me, or Dan, or Jim, or if anybody else has to do payroll, for example, yep. we have, okay, step one is collect the, the timesheets, add them up with a calculator, make sure that the numbers match, put, put the stuff in here, send it to this email address, do, do this, do that, do the other thing, so that it's not uh, what's typically referred to as tribal knowledge that we're passing yep. down from, from word of mouth. Yep. That way it's there and is a, a standard thing that just any, any one of us can do. Absolutely. I'd also like to mention that Irene has put in countless hours into this uh, and donated her time and just wanted her to know that she's appreciated. Well, thank you. Ab thank absolutely. You. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much for your hard work, Irene. And really just yeah. <laughs> all around, uh, Sue, Irene, Jim, myself, not to sound like I lack humility, but um, I want to thank each of you for the, the hard work that you put in throughout the week that a lot of times people don't, don't see. And I know I, I don't bill for any of my time. I know Irene hasn't been billing for her time. I know Jim hasn't been billing for his time. And while that's, that's good in some ways, it's potentially bad in others. We don't, we're not out to make money on this. We're here to make things get better and get things done. So I know there's, there's tons of days and nights that Irene is in. There's stuff that I do behind the scenes with like the technical stuff to make sure that we, we have a, a working Zoom platform or the Google Drive or the, the new email on the website, uh, which is actually, I think, two, two agenda items from now. But um, making sure all of that stuff kind of meshes together in the background. Um, obviously signage and road work and stuff like that. I was out, like we had talked about with the signs this past week for a couple hours with a couple of the road crew guys putting signs in. Um, so to, to echo your point, Jim, thank you each one of you for your, your hard thank work you. that kind of goes unnoticed and usually unappreciated, so. Well, thank goodness for you. You're our technical guru. <laughs> yeah, I, do, I do what I can, Jim, I do what I can. Um, because if it was up to me, there'd be a problem. <laughs> <laughs>
This would be a paper and pen uh, meeting with phone calls if it were up to me, but yeah. <laughs> yeah doing doing uh, meetings through uh, USPS. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so good. Also, I'm, I'm glad back on the, the QuickBooks related thing that Rick was able to get everything done. I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed that he was able to get that done and only utilize 14 hours worth of uh, Oh, worth no, of labor. there's more hours oh, now. there's more hours? Okay. Um, yeah. Still, the amount of, of what I had concerns with as we started to peel back prior years, that's still, that's still a lot less than I thought it was going to be. So that's fantastic. He's keeping things under that 40 hour mark. Um, so I think once he hits the 40 hour mark, he's going to let us know. And I did ask him to send us a current bill. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. We don't have anything else. We'll move on to the next item on the agenda, which is the Earl Lehman poultry operation letter of credit. Uh, this was auto increased on July 24th, 2020, uh, from $81,933 and 70 cents to $90,127 uh, based on the recent site inspection by McCarthy Engineering, uh, they recommend a release in full of the letter of credit. Um, so more, largely for informational purposes only, we should save this for Thursday night, but based on what the engineering uh, firm says, we should we should release their letter of credit. They're, they've satisfied their requirements. Okay, next up is the website. Uh, we are currently in queue for some of the development with the Civic CMS team. I reached out this, uh, I guess it was this past week, and they said like, we're sorry, we're, we're working through stuff, but it's a first come, first in, first out sort of affair. You've moved through a couple of the stages and we're, we're now kind of in a holding pattern for you. So we'll, we'll reach out to you and let you know when we go through the next stage as we move through the process. Uh, so at this point, we're in kind of a, a waiting point. And uh, I'll keep you guys in the loop if I hear anything from any one of the Civic CMS reps, whether it's Sal or Bono or anybody else. Okay. Also along the technology lines, our Comcast contract is actually up. Not our, not our contract. Not our contract. Oh, it's the service. It's the service. It's not yeah. the, it's not the, um, the franchise. Not it's not the franchise, franchise phase. It's our, our contract for like internet and phone in the building. Um, the contract that we are on currently costs $193.25, consists of a 75 megabit per second internet connection, two mobile lines, and a basic line with voicemail. Uh, that same plan, uh, because of it being a legacy plan, it cannot be renewed as is, would cost $283.25 a month, uh, which I basically said hard no on. What else do you have? So in, in discussion with the Comcast reps, there is a, a new plan that is almost identical to our old plan. Uh, the difference being is the internet is much faster um, and it's only like 18 cents more a month. It's uh, $193.44. So I was like, no brainer, let's, let's go with that one. So uh, I don't wanna wait until Thursday to do this because I think we're actually technically like in kind of a grace period on this where the contract has expired and we should have actually renewed this a while ago, but they had, they actually at Comcast had some, some staffing situations. The guy that I was working with is no longer with the company. Um, so I'd like to make a motion to allow me to move forward with authorizing the change in plan. And then we actually, uh, after talking to Andy, we are allowed to do a recurring payment on this that we could set it up to come out of an account at a regular interval. Uh, because we actually get a, a price break on that by setting up recurring payments. Um, so the, the motion is twofold. Uh, motion to allow me to move forward with the change in contract with Comcast and to set up recurring payments. Second. I'll second that motion. I, I think she got it. I, yeah, as I say, I think she's. I think she's transcribing that. I, I yeah. said quite a bit, and I apologize yeah. for that. So that's okay. It's okay. Uh, roll call. Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. If I'm not prepared for the motion, it takes me a little while. Yeah, that's okay. I'll, I'll, get, I'll try to give you advanced warning next that's time. Okay. I kind of just okay. roll into it's that okay. one. Um, Next item on the agenda is the road projects for 2020. Uh, we did get a quote from Reber and Zerby for overlaying some of the bad spots. I had asked Franklin to get two additional quotes uh, simply because of the cost figures that that entails. Um, I haven't gotten anything back yet. So if we don't have anything in short order, I think our next step is gonna be let's make some calls. We have the list of things that Reber and Zerby gave us quotes for and just try and get a, a bunch of companies out there to give us 
a couple of estimates. Doesn't doesn't really matter who, just as long as they're they're potentially willing to do the work and can give us an estimate. Um, did, barring, you call, did you call did you call to verify that one? Yep, uh, it's, amount? it is correct. Okay. Now I don't know if you remember in the past. I think you were on the board then. Um, maybe not. Um, in the past, they gave us a quote to do the work, and we paid for the asphalt separately. I, I did not so that ask made them. The quote less. Yeah, I did not ask them, but just based on the the amount, because the one the one road is just shy of, or it's actually just a little over twenty seven thousand to do it. Right. That we're we're getting into the territory of definitely two written quotes potentially bid. Right. Um, so what I was actually thinking is we get a couple more written quotes and then we we make the decision of okay, one is this below the threshold where we can we can award it based on the quotes. If it's not, what the suggestion on my part would be, we're getting late in the year, especially because of the whole COVID thing. The, the window for doing the road work this year is closing. Mm -hmm. We potentially take the, the, the cost estimate that we have. I can call Charlie Parrish and work with him on, on updating the, the packet. And, and, and I hate to say this, but it might actually be beneficial for us to add it into our bid packet that we already have prepped and put it into early 2021. So we just All assumed right. it's... Good. I personally think that would be better because I don't know if you all know, they do stop making asphalt the beginning of November. Yep. I was going to say there's, there's also, I think there's regulatory requirements around doing road work beyond like yeah. emergencies that you can't and, do at certain times of the year. And we're, and, we're and, rapidly approaching that. Right. And we need to comply with PennDOT regulations also. So it, it's like a mixture of things yeah. in there. <laughs> yeah. So this, this may be a situation where, and I hate to put it off another year, but just as a product of necessity, we may have to. And this, this could actually work positively for us because if we have one company bidding on the overlays, the oil and chip, everything else that we want to do, it's going to be more cost effective. We're not going to be right. paying overhead for, for two separate firms to come out and do that. Exactly. Um, the other thing is because of the, the timing on this, we could get this packet out very early in the year. We could put it out in January or February mm -hmm. since it's by, other than the overlays, it's ready to go. Um, mm -hmm. That's been kind of the stumbling block. We can also then early part of the year, start working on the next packet of what would be 2021's normal road work to try and get that out in uh, March or April. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm, like I said, I'm personally thinking, let's get the quotes, let's make the decision based on the quotes, but then that'll also give us helpful information of what we want to put into that, that pen bid packet. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is the road crew safety gear. Um, Irene's got a little more insight on this than I will, so I will, I will let you take the wheel for a moment. Yeah, uh, last week, uh, John just was driving down the road, came across a road buckle, and so he called, I think he called you or texted you and Butch and got Butch out there, and then he's like, um, no one has safety gear. There's nothing to indicate that they are Marion Township road crew, so, um, and plus, I guess they couldn't readily find any road close signs. <laughs> Even though it was a dot road and a dot issue, we definitely need to keep our guys safe. We need to get helmets. We need to get vests. Um, I know John had mentioned he wants to go down to the rapid response store and take a look and get some uh, ideas over uh, what we should get for everyone. So whether we'll, we'll get numbers as far as uh, vests, helmets, and sweatshirts for everyone. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah, I'm all for it. I, I may have been operating under the mistaken assumption that there's at least one. I thought there was at least one of the, the high visibility yellow reflective jackets in, in the garage there. <laughs> yeah, but, I was going to say, I thought there were a couple of vests in the garage. But... Yeah, because I know, I, I don't think they were Peter Wallace's. I had gone out with him a couple of times yeah. and we had, he had the jacket and I'm, I'm almost positive that it was a Marion Township jacket rather than something he had and I had yeah. a vest. Um, if that's maybe lost in translation somewhere, it might just be buried in, in the multitude of crap in the garage. But um, we, bottom line is we should get some, some road close signs. We, we do use them relatively, I, I hate to say this, but relatively frequently, regrettably. Um, and the last time that we had to use them for any long period of time, we, we ended up just renting them from MSI. Mm -hmm. it was I'll see if we can uh, kind of search through the garage. I'm a little bit afraid to go in there. But I guess on that note then, <laughs> Maybe somewhere towards the fall, hopefully we could set up a couple of dates where we could go empty out the garage, clean it up, go through all the materials, and uh, 
put it back in. Yeah. So. so just to that point, I do actually, when we were talking about that barrel that's in really bad shape that we don't want to try to move, I, yeah. ha I actually have a barrel. I, I managed to get my hands on a, a 55 gallon drum for free. So I can bring that over to the township building. We can actually siphon uh, or pump the, the original contents out of that questionable barrel into a nice <laughs> new one and uh, worry about trying to figure out how to dispose of it in something that isn't going to potentially fall apart if you breathe on it. Do we know what's in that barrel? Not a clue. I'm sure it's probably a melange of all sorts of fun paints, chemicals, and oils. Uh, okay. All the things that uh, generally one tries to avoid <laughs> having together. Um, but yeah, I think that's a, a perfect idea, Irene. Mean, we can try and find some availability one of these days. To, even if it's just a couple of days, little bits at a time, chip away yeah. at that, get the lights up. But it's 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 a mess. It's been a mess that's just accumulated for a very long time in there. But it would be good to get things that we don't use, like old old paint cans, get them out of here. Old chemicals yeah. that we don't use, old pesticides, get them out. Get some shelves up. Get some yeah. some of those little, little pegboard things to hang tools on. Yeah. Exactly. It's it's a it's a it's a target rich environment for things that yeah. we can do. We just need to find the time to do it. I like to clean things up. Ask Sue. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, the desk the desk does look nice. It's uh, I think probably the cleanest that desk has been for a very long time. <laughs> I'm afraid to take any time off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll come back and everything will be organized and you won't be able to find anything. No, no, no. I would never touch your stuff. Only if you told me to do things. No, I, you know, you got to be organized. This way, you, you, you know, when you need something, you can't find it when you want it. And I hate to go out and, and repurchase something that was there all along. So. Don't let John go down and look at that garage until we clean it up. It's probably yeah. lots of fire hazards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep keep him well, away from that. I, but I want him there too, and he oh, has yeah. a pretty good idea over hazardous material right. stuff. And well, when yeah. we're actually doing the cleaning, but don't give him too much yeah. of a heart attack ahead no. of time. No. No. I mean, ideally, if we get road crew out, we get everyone out. I volunteered my children, pull everything out into the parking lot. Uh, you know, keep an inventory of everything that we have, and then put it back in a safe, visible, orderly way, and so that we can keep track of the inventory and. Yeah. yeah, it would be good to inventory, but beyond that, I don't yeah. I don't know if we're actually subject to like MSDS sheet requirements, but I'm pretty sure that we are, and I'm pretty well, sure that we don't have any of that. <laughs> right, right. And let me, well, again, the nice thing is that most MSDS stuff is online, but if there's an injury, I like to know, what were you using? Do you have mm. an MSDS form on hand? And so, again, you know, par for the course, we need to bring everything up to the standard that it needs to be at. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think we should have, in my opinion, a digital copy of it, like the, the binders yep. that I keep talking about, a digital copy of it, like on the Google Drive, and then an actual physical one that you can yep. flip through in the case of an emergency. Yep. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the office window replacement. Uh, we received a quote from Mike's Remodeling. Uh, Troy Brubaker and Kissling were out, took measurements, but we have not received quotes yet. So I think at this point, the, the next thing to do would be we can maybe this week call Troy and call Kissling Construction and ask like, are you gonna send us something? We'd, we'd love to know what the, what the cost is gonna be for the windows. Um, simply I, I, because, did, okay. I did ask him, to, I, I mentioned to him that we have a workshop meeting today and a board meeting Thursday. It would be wonderful if he could get us a quote by then, but he, I think he was in, was it Tuesday or Wednesday? Um, he said he would try, but he was busy, you know, so um, the other company um, has not called or shown up yet. Yeah, I know from doing the the, the soffit and fascia work that we did last year, it's hard to get people to give you quotes. Like I had to get those three quotes that I did each time. I, I called probably close to 10 places mm -hmm. and only got like a 30% response rate on people. Mm -hmm. So it's we'll keep at it and if we had people give measurements then they've done they've done the hard work of it we just need them to, to finish it off and send us the slip of paper that says it's going to cost x number of dollars right okay nothing really further on that that's just uh one of the things that we we have that we need to do because the windows in the office or really the windows in the building all around are, are kind of awful so yeah, I have soap towel, towel, you know, I have those towels on the window so the, the other morning, the other day when Jim came in, he said, oh, this towel is wet. <laughs> yeah, it, keeps okay. the, it keeps the room from being wet. Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> uh, while I'm thinking of it, Sue, not an agenda item, but uh, did you did you happen to, to look for the, the toner in the printer? I I looked, but I that's as far as I got. Um, I think Amazon probably has the cheapest price. It was yeah. like 30 
three dollars for two cartridges which that's is not, a, that's not bad at all actually compared to hewlett packard is 202 dollars for one cartridge so yeah yeah i'm thinking amazon's the way to go I, and yeah. i'll be honest i didn't get much further past like looking on amazon either i didn't like comparison shop i just simply yeah, didn't have the, the time enough. I went to Amazon first and, and that's as far as I got. So Yeah. And so I, did, I roughly did the same thing that I looked at. I'm like, oh, that's not bad. And just didn't come back to it. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, yeah, there's the, still that, that low toner bubble comes up long <laughs> before we actually run out of toner. But, but yeah. I like to have one on hand just in case. <laughs> yeah. Ideally, with the amount that we use that printer, we should just always have one or two of them yeah. on hand. Because like I actually use that printer more because I was told that that ink, that toner is kind of cheaper than the toner. Even though we got generic toner for the, um, the Hewlett Packard um, copier, fax machine, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, you know, the, we got generic toner uh, ink for that. Um, but it's, I was told it's still cheaper to use the laser because it's yeah. cheaper. Toner. Yeah, I think that's, I think the, the, the newer one, the multifunction unit is a, is an inkjet and that's, yeah, that's always yeah. more expensive than a laser one. Like yeah. it's always more expensive than toner. Yeah. So yeah, yeah that's, that's no problem. Let's, let's so get I, the. I tend, to, I tend to use the laser first unless there's absolutely something like photographs. I like to print out in color because they, if you just print, print them out in black and white, you can't see anything. Um. Okay. But I, I so, very rarely use the the inkjet, the field packard inkjet. Yeah. So I would say let's uh, whether it's me or you, as long as one of us gets a price that we can make a motion around for Thursday night. Yeah. Okay. I would say let's let's just do that because it's it's a consumable that we should honestly just should have on hand. It's no different okay. than like paper envelopes or paper clips. Right. Right. Can I revisit the building for a second? Um, yeah. That the building is in it's in the condition now that. I really think we should start to investigate putting a new building up someplace and see if there's any grants or monies available to assist with that. Yeah, so I, th I think there, there's two things. I don't disagree with you that the building needs a lot of work. I think because of the historical significance of the building, we might get we might get run out of town with pitchforks and, and torches. Um, what well, I would understand. Can I, that. can I comment on that? Absolutely. <laughs> so there are a lot of people who claim it is a historical building. But the fact, this is what I've been told by someone who is into historical things, the fact that they changed the first grade classroom into a garage makes it not a historical building. Okay. So and with, the fact that they put the file room in the second yeah. grade classroom, you know, um, makes it a non-historical building. And now there's a furnace in there. So, yeah. um, you know, so, uh, yeah, people are going to squawk, but... Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, the other thing that might be worth considering, this is something that I had mentioned in passing to Irene, is if we can find grants, we don't necessarily have to get rid of the township building. We might be able to get uh, right. either uh, through the course of the waiting game, we might be able to buy up one of the nearby parcels immediately adjacent to the township building or even something that's close by and put up a secondary building that we'd still have the township building from a I guess like a, the alumni rooms and the historical purposes, and we could actually maybe even convert that to more of a uh, a social hall, if you will. But we could get something a little more new and modern. And to that point, with the the whole garage thing, if we're going to be building another building, if we can find the grants for it or the funding to do it, we could actually move the road crew stuff, other than like the salt sheds that we have, entirely out of that equation, and maybe repurpose that back area again as like like I said, a social hall where you could do bingo and things like that. Um, that we wouldn't necessarily have to, to rip yeah. down the building and build something in its place. We could potentially keep the both of them. Um, it really becomes a function of, of finances and, and really what the, right. the general squawking and outcry from, from people in the community that have a, a sentimental attachment to the building would be. Yeah. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of good stuff and it's difficult to find funding because like I had said to, to Irene before she got elected when we were kicking this around was, I'd love to find funding to put an elevator in a building so that we'd actually have accessibility to the second floor. Because right now, one of the things that really kills us is that that staircase is functional, but from an ADA standpoint, it's it's a it's a deal breaker. We can't really have the second floor open for for general use because it's not ADA compliant. Yeah, uh, Jim, on uh, what you were saying before, um, actually, conversation with John. Uh, 
I guess I, I lean a little bit more towards a, a new build also because we could see about getting funds from an emergency management position. So if it was built as an emergency management center along with township building as well as a community resource center, um, we may be able to get some different kind of fundings with respect to that. The other thing is actually starting to speak to people at the state level, senators, congressmen, things like that, see if they would be able to say, hey, we're going to help you if you name it X, Y, and Z. So it could be the Marion Township Community Center along with, you know, whoever would, would help contribute with the funding. We could look at private donors. I mean, basically, as long as we could get the funding and the land, this is something that it might be a multi-year project, but Jim, if you're willing to work on it with me, I'm willing to go around to. And, and start taking a look. If anything, I wanted to start looking at other townships, if they have newer buildings and see how they got the funding for it. And also look at the layout and stuff. Because you know, just as Peter said, we're not, to fully use the building, we're not ADA compliant. We can't use that second story. The second story right. is really just falling apart. We need much better access, but how nice would it be if we had a community resource center? If, God forbid, that there's a major storm where there's either flooding, hurricane, tornado, etc., we have nowhere for our residents to evacuate to. We, have, we do not have the means, the provisions, anything to accommodate people. Even if there's a house fire, we don't have an emergency shelter for anyone in our community to go to. We would have to rely on the Red Cross for placement, and that would be taking them out of the immediate community because we don't have wonderful hotels where we currently live, um, except for the, what's that, tuck me in? Or what? Tuck me in. Tuck me in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, I, think, so, I think I'd take my chances with the Red there. Cross. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how much land? How much land do we own beside the fire hall? It it, it goes. We don't, own the, fire we don't own the fire hall. So beyond the township building, it goes back quite a ways. The the complications. We own the playground. Yeah, and and the playground. Mm -hmm. um, a lot. I I would be hesitant to touch the playground simply because yeah. of the space requirements. We have the ball field. We have those multi-purpose right. things. A lot of it is is kind of. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say locked in place because if you're discussing that sort of change, there's right. really nothing locked in place, but. I'd, I would focus more on the, the plot that we have at the township building, which does extend back quite a ways. Uh, would require a significant amount of earthwork to, to make usable, but beyond the, the salt shed and everything else, it goes back probably a good, I don't know, keep me honest, Sue, probably a good 500, 600 feet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Um, right. So, so, so it's really kind of, you know, I think it, it's gathering a lot of information. It's talking to other townships. It's, it's tapping into multiple resources. So not just, you know, we need a new building. It's, can this be an emergency management center? Can this serve as a reserve shelter for the community? Can this serve as a community resource center? What else can we provide to our community um, as well as in, in benefit us as having a better office space. We don't have a dedicated space for our tax collector. We don't, we would need some space for emergency management, whether it's a small office, um, but we need to be able to store um, items that can be used. We have our tables. Like we, I think Irene froze for but a second. What could we, again, be doing better? Yeah, so... I'm, I'm not opposed to any ideas and thoughts, especially when we're in the early stages of conversations. Yeah. I think the best thing to do would be to go into this armed with uh, really what we think the financial outset is going to be, as well as what the potential sources of being able to fund it are. And then on top of that, I think the icing on the cake, which would help make this a little more palatable to people, is if we are actually or, or will be considering uh, replacing the existing building, is doing some of the things that it, I know it happens elsewhere of reusing certain aspects of the okay. building um, so that it, it is maybe not the same building, but it has some of the, the original characteristics. Like if we have the, the light fixtures from the meeting rooms or um, some woodwork or the chalkboards or, or things like that, that might, that might make it a little more palatable um, simply because I, I agree that it, the building does need a lot of work and there's a lot of things that prevent us from really fully utilizing it. And it, at some point, we have to look at the cold, hard fact of um, do we have the money to be able to repair it, or do we have to seriously consider the, 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 the breakaway cost of is it going to be a, a million dollars to repair the building, or is it going to be $500,000 to rebuild? All right. So I think that's, that's going to be something that we're going to we're gonna have to discuss ad nauseum for like 
a while in order to figure it out. And and like I said, I'm I'm not going to turn away any reasonable idea. I just know that we need to be absolutely ironclad in what we're doing and why, because there are a lot of people who do have uh, an attachment to the building because that was where they they went to school as kids. Why is my phone still? Someone's looking for you. No, oh, someone's angry. Someone calls in. <laughs> no, no, no. It's actually I don't know why my phone was was doing that. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna mute it. Um, I told it to not continue ringing, and it kept ringing. <laughs> Gotta love cell phones. Um, okay, so now that we've uh, we've hashed that point out, do we have anything further that we want to discuss around uh, the windows or the building just in general at this point in time? No, I'm good. Okay, awesome. Next item on the agenda is the Berks County Board of Elections. Uh, we received notification from that entity that they are going to be doing a study. They've hired an outside firm to uh, they essentially survey the polling sites to ensure that they are accessible with individuals with uh, disabilities. Um, the main part of the building from the last time that I looked at it is ADA compliant in the sense that we have the ramp, we can get people in through the doors. The doors are of a su sufficient size to meet requirement. We have accessible bathrooms. Um, so we're, we're okay there, I think, but they will be doing the study sometime in August to, to confirm that we are an acceptable polling place based on uh, people with disabilities being able to get in and vote. Okay, next item on the agenda is the Stonecroft Homeowners Association. We received uh, two letters as copy. They're not implicitly directed to us, but we need to be aware of them. Uh, the first one is around the street lights. Uh, they sent this to Landmark Homes, the developer for Stonecroft, around the lights. The lights were uh, in the plan listed as having to be furnished. Um, Stonecroft put in, or I should say Landmark put in the lights as leased units rather than purchased units, and there's some some debate between those two entities on, on what furnished actually means. Um, from a township standpoint, the fact that the street lights are there, regardless of what the underlying method to getting them there was, is what satisfied what was in the plan. So unfortunately, there's really not a lot that we can get involved in on that, other than just to, to keep uh, aware of it in case there is something that arises that we can engage on. Um, they also sent a letter to the Marion Fire Company regarding the fire suppression, the failed hydrants. Um, this is again, kind of between them and Landmark. The only thing that we might be able to get involved in is at some point, I believe it's when they complete phase four, one of the items in phase four is around the hydrants and the function of the hydrants. So they would not be able to complete phase four technically until they satisfy that, that requirement. Um, I plan on bringing this up with Jim. I'll give him kind of a heads up via email throughout the week to let him know that it is gonna be one of the things that we're gonna to touch on, but I want him to clarify further around the hydrants really what the interaction is between the township and the, the residents of Stonecroft around that. If there's anything that we can do to, to help them make sure that they have what is required in the plan and what's needed, uh, or uh, just kind of a general commentary of what we can and cannot do in terms of assisting. Okay, okay. next item on the agenda is the act. Okay. Yeah. Can we go back to that for just a second? Certainly. Um, yeah, so, so I read through that letter also. Um, one of the other issues was the photo metrics. And again, not being 100% familiar with the plan, so they're, do the photo metrics of the installed lights meet the requirements as detailed by the plan? So the, you mean like the light, the, the color, the tech color temperature of the light? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's not specified in the plan. Yeah. Unless I'm mistaken, and it's been a little bit since I read that, it doesn't yeah. actually call out what the, the temperature of the light and should the be. Color. It's yeah. street lights. Street lights, yeah. And uh, unfortunately, they got hung up on the, the word furnished. And I agree with you, furnished means provided. It doesn't necessarily mean owned. And and, and I feel bad because it, it, that's a whole contract issue. Yeah. And yeah, they're going to have to argue that one out over what the meaning is. And that's a, that's an issue for the courts. That's not an issue for us, unfortunately. Yeah. Truth be told, I'd I'd love to to help them out because that's a yeah. that's a rough thing to have to deal with. But the, the bottom line is, there's really nothing that we have in our toolbox that we can do yeah. to assist. It's a it's a matter between the the homeowners, the homeowners association, and yeah. the developer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, last item on the agenda is the Act Five Thirty Seven. Uh, I sent over a draft to you guys. I know Jim Jim responded. Thank you for that. Um, of the clarifying 
couple of quick bullet points and a, a little paragraph of what we want to tell the DEP. Um, Irene, if you haven't gotten a chance to look it over, give it a look. Sorry, just to get a chance to respond oh. to that email. Okay. So no, thank you, thank you. Yes, it, it, I'd love it. I can't wait to for you to contact them and hopefully hash something out that works well. Yeah, because my my approach on this is we're not we're not asking for anything that's outside of regulation. I've read I've read the regs. You've read the regs. Yep. We're within the confines of what the Act 537 calls for, but we're simply saying we want to give people the opportunity to manage under best technical guidance until we determine need. And like, I, I think I may have forgotten to attach the Excel sheet to that file, but um, I can send it out and it's in the Google Drive if anybody wants to see it, um, of really what the, the financial impact is based on the failure rate among the affected uh, properties in the community. So if we know it costs you $300 every year to, to maintain your septic system, how many people we have to have fail and be potentially put onto a holding tank in order for that, that, that tipping point to be hit for, okay, when does it make financial sense to us for us to start considering a public sewer? Um, the next stage of the plan, like I outlined in that email, is once we know need, we start asking for money. If we get the kind of grant money that we need to be able to do it, then we talk about implementing. But until then, we manage under best technical guidance and anything else that we have to do through the SEO uh, per DEP's own guidelines to make sure that we're we're being safe and compliant. Um, so I'm I'm hoping we can find traction there because uh, again, common sense isn't terribly common, but I'm hoping common sense wins out on this one. We're not asking for like a, a pass or asking to to be unsafe or do anything dangerous. We're just asking for to for the the order essentially the order of operations to be changed. The long term plan is we're going to continue managing. We're actually we're going to start managing because we didn't have an on lot management ordinance before. But we're going to start managing and we're going to maintain as long as we can. And when we hit that point where we can no longer do that, then we'll talk sewer. Agreed. Okay. So if you guys are in agreement with it, I'll send that over to Jim McCarthy. I'll keep you guys as CC on the email and we'll see what the next step is. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, that is all of the agenda items. So we'll move into the comments. Uh, I have a, a couple of comments. The first one is around technology. Um, Irene and I have been talking about upgrading the office computers. They're, oh, yeah. <laughs> to, to put it lightly, they're, they're in need of a little work. They're, they're not bad computers, but they're a little underwhelming on some of the, the technical specs. And we also have years and years and years of just general system bloat. Um, so what I'd like to do is I, I'd like to get additional memory for the computers, the RAM, so that it's able to, to work a little better in terms of being able to handle multiple applications being opened uh, for QuickBooks, being able to, to run certain reports a little better. Um, to put the maximum amount of memory in each one of those computers, it's $57. And we have, we actually, I think, have three machines. There's the two that are actively in use and there's the other one that's on the floor that's unplugged. Um, ultimately, I'd like to do all three just so that uh, one, we have a, a spare computer if we need it, or if we had a situation where we had to have a, a third person in the office working on something, we could have the third computer. Um, additionally, I'd like to replace the, the hard drive in the computer, and I can, I can redo Windows and everything else on it and get QuickBooks and everything else installed, transfer licenses over, that's, that's easy, that's just a function of my time. Um, the replacement hard drive is a, it's a, it's a smaller unit, but we don't need a lot of space on it because we're gonna be storing things externally is only $28. Okay. So uh, beyond that, the last upgrade that we could potentially make to the computers would be the processor. The processor that's in there right now is, is kind of a middle of the road offering. Um, and I'm actually thinking we should go through the, the act of redoing the, 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 the hard drive, the solid state drive and the memory and see what kind of performance differences we have before doing the processor. But the processor is uh, generally speaking, between $75 and $100 uh, if you can find them used. If you buy them new, they're like $400 a piece. Um, and we don't, just for the record, we don't need anything new. It's, unless you really, really abuse a processor, they're, they're good. Um, and if, in that case, if we find one that was defective, I can always return it or get a, get a replacement unit. So um, at this point, I would say I'd like to make a motion to make the financial expenditure to get replacement memory at $57 a piece for the three computers and replacement uh, primary storage for $28 a piece for the three computers. I'll second that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wait, wait. 
Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Greg. Fantastic. So the way I'm going to attack this, just so that you guys know, is once I have the parts in, I'm going to use the third computer that we have that shouldn't have anything on it. I'm going to get that one completely set up, QuickBooks installed, everything, files moved around, Good. plop that into place where Irene can use it. I'll take her existing machine out of circulation, do the same thing to that, move Sue's stuff over to it, and then just kind of flip-flop them along so that we don't have a situation where anybody's without a computer for any any amount of time, not even any length of time, but just no interruption whatsoever. Um, the, Peter, the are other, we doing backup uh, of QuickBooks? Yes, but okay, that's okay. that's actually that's my next point. Um, one okay. of the things that I've been I've actually been on my own time and effort and money. I've been working on doing a testbed platform for network and SAT storage for the office, and I've gotten it to the point where I have a workable system. Um, ah. We are looking at for me to set this up would be about between five to $600, which for a computer system is not that expensive. Uh, it would be a, a, a server, server grade piece of equipment and would have five two terabyte hard drives in it, which would be fully redundant at a level where we could lose three out of the five disks without any data loss. Wow. Whatever that you just said, whatever yeah. that means. <laughs> so so, uh, so of, of, the five, <laughs> of the five disks in the computer that are storing data, we could lose three of them and it would still be fully operational, that we could replace okay. them without losing any data. Okay. Um, so that, that would be our, our local storage uh, for ordinances, everything that we want to do. Um, I would also be able to set that up for an automatic backup to like if we wanted to go the Google Drive route or Carbonite or uh, one of the Microsoft offerings with like OneDrive, that we could schedule incremental backups off-site that if we ever had a fire at the building, we wouldn't potentially lose everything. Yeah. Um, the benefit like the of doing it that way... Had yeah, yeah, yeah. We're like the power outage. The nice thing about the server too is it actually the thing that I'm using has a, an integrated utility in it, where if you plug a, a battery backup, a UPS into it, it can talk to the UPS. So as soon as it knows that power is out, you can have it run through a, a series of scheduled tasks. Like if you're without power for ten minutes, shut down nicely rather than just losing power. There's there's a lot of really cool stuff that, that I can do with it. I just need to get the get the equipment in hand and get it get it kind of knit together and configured. Um, Beyond that, the third technical point that I had was uh, I want to get a set up on a, a domain, not like the website domain, but a, a local domain. Right now, each one of the computers has uh, a, a user account and a password on it. This is specific to that and only that computer. So if Sue forgets her password for any reason, we're kind of stuck. Um, there's some things that I can do to force passwords off, but it's it's a not fun process and it, it has its own unique uh, concerns around security to be able to do that. Um, so what I want to do is I want to set up a, a separate smaller computer. It doesn't have to be anything big or flashy. We could even buy an old like desktop computer and repurpose it. Uh, the only thing we'd have to get is a, a slightly different operating so system for it. We'd have to get Windows Server rather than just like Windows Home and Professional and get that set up so that it, it's doing uh, centralized management for user accounts. So no matter which computer you went to in the office, and I'm sure both of you, all of you are probably familiar with this elsewhere, that if you, you're in your office building, Jim, you could sign in as Jim on any one of the computers, same username, same password, and it automatically nice. synchronizes. That's what I want to get for the township building so that we have everything kind of on the same, the same network, talking to each other, secured under one umbrella of security, and that the Honestly, the passwords are, are manageable then. If Sue forgets it or Irene forgets her password or really whatever the underlying cause is, whoever has the administrator account, which we could keep on file in, in the safe, could sign on and reset the password and say, okay, set a new one. Easy peasy. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's what I want to I do. I got to get some prices around that. But uh, ultimately, one of the things that I want to do in that, uh, that HVAC space where the old file room used to be is I'd like to set up our equipment there. A any servers that we have, the router, the modem, uh, the stuff for the telephony, if we ever do anything with security cameras, I'd like to get that kind of centered in there uh, so that we have kind of a, a one-stop shop, a space for the IT stuff. That way it's not cohabitating in the office with Sue. I think that's an absolute Good. must because right now we haven't changed any passwords and not that I think it would happen but unless you have a disgruntled supervisor that was you know, voted out of office and they make copies of keys and they come back and you know all this other stuff you need to have some kind of a 
security like that so you could change the information yeah having this set up this way this is this is the exact reason that companies like enterprises do this is <laughs> the the support is actually scalable you don't have to run around and change like thankfully we only have like two to three computers or if you can't have a laptop uh, but we only have a handful of computers that are actually in circulation if we were much larger than that you could have a situation where like oh crap we got to run around and we have to change passwords on every single one of like 100 computers which is an absolutely monstrous idea people people have quit for less um so I'll, I'll work on getting the the tech specs drawn out for that and see if there's maybe something that i can pick up secondhand uh like i said for the domain we don't need anything crazy running a domain as just a domain and nothing else no file shares no print servers no email servers no nothing like that is it's pretty basic it, it doesn't need a lot of horsepower to to do so i'll try and find some stuff there and i'll i'll send out a, a written estimate on that but uh like I said, right now the, the network attached storage is looking at between five and six hundred bucks, and it should should get us exactly what we need for for now and for quite a while into the future in terms of, of size. Oh, it's an absolute must, I think. Absolutely. Speaking of computers, Irene, can you ask John what the fire department needs is in the way of a computer? I have at least <laughs> I have at least two laptops oh boy. sitting in my garage that I don't use anymore because we use those for enrollment purposes. I have um, at least a, a couple of them laying here. Now they may need some upgrades, but we yeah, could have them. And that's something we could help them out with too, potentially. I think the biggest problem isn't getting the computer, it's getting them to use the, the computer. computer. Yes. Um, and that might be something that I, I really, I, I wanna get some time to sit down with John and discuss this is we may have to, and I know the fire department's probably gonna push back on this a little bit, but we may have to take a, a much more involved uh, stance with them. And uh, this may fall to either me or John as the EMC, but being a little more embedded with them so if they have a situation where let's just hypothetically say they're no some nobody wants to use the computer for one reason or another that one of us could step in and go okay we need to file these things online otherwise we're not going to get funding or we need to do this because it's a potential liability if we don't do it this way um we may have to take kind of a liaison role into that but i agree if we have something that we can we can either get cheap and just give them and say you can't can't really argue this here's a laptop you at least have half of the equation yeah. already. Um, that's kind of the the opening salvo of what that that group of actions needs to be. Yep. Yeah. Give John a call or a text anytime, and uh, you can sit down with him, and he can give you a very clear understanding okay. over what state funding grants reporting requirements are, um, because we our, the fire department needs to be brought up to snuff, and we need to have communications. We need to have much better interactions with them. Um, because we are Marion Township. We are not just Marion Township Fire. We're not just the Marion Township Board of Supervisors. We are a township and we're working best to benefit all community residents. Absolutely. We need to, to, to one of the points that I discussed with both of you before you, you were sworn in is we're very fractured right now. We, we're a community that exists in, in pockets of things. Um, case in point being the fire department. We need, to, we need to function as not just the Board of Supervisors and the fire company. We need to function as Marion Township where we each have things that we do to make sure that the common good is addressed. Um, so I'm not gonna put John on the hot seat for, for Thursday night, but maybe like put a bug in his ear for next month's either yeah. workshop or, or supervisors meeting about coming armed with, okay, these are the things that I, I know, like I don't know the things that I don't know, but these are the things that I know we need to address with the fire department. We need to have reports, we need to have this, we need to have, make sure they file this annually, make sure this, that, and the other thing. Um, yeah. That way we can go and have a, a reasonable discussion with whether it's Mervyn Brubaker or anybody else from the, the fire department. Hey, these are our concerns from the township side of things. We want to work with you. We're not coming in and being a dictator here, but these are the things that we need to see done and we want to work with you to make sure that they are. Yeah. Oh, well, you're not putting him on the hot seat. I think he'll be around. He likes to talk, so. <laughs> okay. That sounds good. I, like I said, I didn't want to put him at a, a disadvantage there to, to spring it on him for Thursday night, but, uh, to, to the ultimate point, I, I agree. There's much like what we're running into with some of the things that we've started on unearthing with the township. There's, there's stuff that just needs to be updated. It hasn't been updated for either lack of knowledge or just lack of time. And it's things that we have to identify and start addressing. Well, we replace, when we replace these, these laptops, I just take them to the recycling center and get rid of them and they're probably still functional. So I'd be happy to yeah. give those to them and let yeah, them, it, see if they could be usable if you want to connect you'll have with to me, wipe them out That's i was going to say if you want to connect with me i can i can do a department of defense yeah. wipe on it and then just start over 
and see okay, what we I'll would bring, need to I'll do. bring them in next. I'll bring them in this week and leave them at the, at the office and you can okay. take a look at them. Fantastic. I'll, I'll take a look at them and, and hopefully by Thursday night, I'll be able to give a recommendation of like, yes, they're good, but we need to do like, for example, we need to put more memory in yeah. them because it's a little Super. outdated or something, but I'll, I'll, I'll take the ball on that. If you can bring them in. Well, I'll even pay for the memory upgrade. Oh, well, so that's, whatever, that's... whatever's needed, I would <laughs> love to be able to donate these to them and so that they have access to one. Okay, that's fantastic. Thank you, Jim. Okay, the last thing, and I'll, I'll get off the, the, the technological soapbox in a moment, is uh, we should buy a second monitor for the, the treasurer's computer. Having the extra screen space, especially when you're trying to look at something in QuickBooks and get a report together, in my mind is an absolute must you can do it with one screen but you're gonna you're gonna hate yourself a little and i'm sure irene can attest to that um <laughs> so um i'd like to to try to find uh either an identical screen to the one that we have now i'll, I'll look on like ebay and see if i can pick one up cheap or just find one at a, the lowest possible price point that's the same size that way they, they kind of are the, the same sort of form factor um, if I have something for Thursday, I'll add that to the, the rotation of, of things that we're going to talk about from a technology space, but I, I think we, we need it. We should have the two screens on that because it's, once you go to two screens, you really don't want to go back to one. You will never, ever go back. I yes. bought that and bought that, <laughs> and I will never go back. <laughs> yeah, that it's, it's, it's life-changing. It really is when you're trying to do mm -hmm. stuff. So uh, that's it for me. I've taking up a, a huge amount of time. So, uh, <laughs> uh, Irene, uh, do you have any comments? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think I had invited um, Don. I'll call him again to make sure he's at Thursday night's meeting. So Don had left me a message. They want to go ahead with the car show in September. I don't recommend it. It would be way too many people coming into town. It's not going to be compliance. We, we can't regulate how many people would come in. I think what 250 capacity is the max for outdoor events, even though this would be an outdoor event. You, you can't regulate something like a car show. Not to mention just the, uh, yeah. the simple social distancing things. Yeah. The, the, first, the first car show we did was a phenomenal success, but I, I know from being heavily entrenched in, in doing crowd control and parking and everything else, there is no way you were going to be able to keep six feet between people. Um, and uh, we actually, we have Kelly on, so I'm going to, I'm going to take a moment to unmute Kelly in case, because uh, she's part of the MTCA, um, if she has anything that she'd like to, to comment further on that. Morning, Kelly. I don't hear anything. I don't hear anything either. Do you have any comments further on the, the car show, Kelly? There okay. she is. No? Okay. <laughs> okay. Fantastic. Thank you. As, as much as I'd love to, to, uh, to have it, I just, in good conscience with what the restrictions are, and because of the amount of planning that it requires, I, I, I don't think we should go forward with that at yeah. this yeah. time. I agree. I think it's a, it's, it's a pretty aggressive timetable. It's, mm -hmm. if you really put everybody's noses to the grindstone on it, it's doable, mm -hmm. but with that same point, and this goes back to the whole thing with the playground, the concern first and foremost is everybody's safety. We don't want to see a situation where we, we essentially open up a COVID Petri dish along, mm -hmm. along Main Street. It, it's unfortunate that we'd have to wait until next year because it, it really was a, a good, good activity. It was a, a wonderful way to spend the day, but we don't want to see people get sick or hurt or even die from, from this sort of thing. So it's, it's one of those things waiting until next spring or potentially next summer is, uh, and I agree with you, is probably the best path forward for that. Agreed. Yeah. Nobody likes, nobody loves antique uh, classic and fast cars more than me. And I'm a little disappointed, but I agree with you. It's just not a great idea right now. Yeah. Uh, Jim, did you want to take over as liaison to the Marion Township Community Association? Sure, I'd okay. be happy to. So if we could make that official then uh, for the meeting, just with the treasurer responsibilities, is quite a bit for me to do. No, I, I, I get it. That's, uh, that's why we're, we're a team. So yeah, there's things I do, there's things you do, there's things that Jim does. Um, we'll, we'll uh, Sue, if you can put that as an agenda item for mm -hmm. Thursday night, we'll make the, the official switch. Uh, and with that said, uh, Kelly, since you're in attendance, that doesn't mean that Irene or I won't be in attendance oh, at any of the meetings. Yeah. It just means that Jim is going to be kind of on the hook for, for actually being at the meetings. Um, so, okay. Do you have anything else, Irene? No, that was about it. Okay, fantastic. Jim, do you have any comments? Not really. Just happy that uh, that things are getting better and uh, 
uh, hopefully we can continue to make Marion Township a much better place to live and raise kids and build homes and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it's a wonderful community. I, I love my community here at Stonecroft and the people that I've met in town. Uh, it's just the friendliest place ever. So we want to make it continue to get better. Yeah, I completely agree. Completely and utterly agree. Okay, Sue, do you have any comments? Um, just, I guess I should mention, um, we've been contacted by the, um, I don't know his title, um, a gentleman who is going to, like, he's with the Pennsylvania Department of Auditing, I guess, and he's going to be auditing the pension plans for the 16, 17, and 2016, 2017, and 2018. Support your general. Yeah. Yeah, the Auditor General. <laughs> yeah, so I just wanted just wanted to make sure you know put it in the minutes that um, he's contacted us and he's going to be doing the audit. We are in the process of um, gathering the information he needs and giving it to him um, by emails right now. Um, so at some point, I believe he might be coming to the office to actually look at things. I'm not sure about that, but, um, but apparently they they only audit the pension plans every three years two three yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. and this happens to be the year yeah there's other than that change around that we have like thrivent and psats and everything else most of it should be pretty open and shut because it was an existing plan for no. a period of time no well, it's, it, no it's a little it's a little confusing for him he called me several times this week um just trying to wrap his head around what we did um yeah because we went from thrivent um, closed that, rolled it over into Morgan Stanley. Uh, Janice got her money out as she requested, and then Morgan Stanley decided that they weren't going to um, maintain any more government pension plans. So that's why we had to go with the PSAT. So he was a little confused as to why we had three different plans and three years and why we did it, how we did it, and that kind of thing. So. Um, so with that said, I think once we get everything out in the open, because we have all the all the paperwork for it is there, it, it's relatively easy to timeline, but I, I can understand his confusion because there there was quite a bit of tap dancing with right. with the pension right. plan for a while there over the span right. of about a year. Right. Um, but every, everything's in order, that nothing was done yeah. beyond what, it's just what should have been done. The information he, you know, he's requesting information beyond the, just the, um, um, what do you call that, uh, the, um, the statements we get the quarterly statements from the pension plan and, mm. and he's requesting more information and that's just part of his audit it's nothing he did or anything yeah. um so okay i just wanted to mention that it, that's kind of started and we're progressing with that slowly but we're progressing <laughs> slow, slow progress is progress yeah and he's okay with that <laughs> okay yeah, if we don't have anything else Yep, that's all I have. Okay, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Then that time is now ten twenty-two a.m. Thank you, everyone. Is there a hold, second? Hold on, hold on. Oh. Uh, Irene, uh, Irene or Jim, do you second the motion? I'll second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, meeting adjourned. Okay, fantastic. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Have a have great weekend, everyone. Have a great week. You too.